So shortage of first is the best known uh, scheduling algorithm as of now. Uh, but um, there is a small problem with this. The problem is it is the best one but you cannot implement it. What is use of it? Isn't it? It is the best one for, for sure but then you cannot use it. Right? So what is the reason? See this. Now shortage of first has both advantages and disadvantages. Advantage is that if you implement this for any, for any process that will lead to maximum throughput. Throughput means the number of processes that are uh, you know finished per unit time is called throughput therefore SJF advantage is that it has maximum throughput but the problem is hmm, okay what is throughput is this you see the schedule which means when you started the first one and when you finish the last job that entire thing is called schedule and within this time you see how many process have completed right then that is nothing but the throughput for example you if you write like this, the schedule is the Gantt chart. Let us say this is the point where you started the first one. Maybe at zero nothing is available. At one time you started the first one and then you finish the last one here, right? This entire thing is called length of the schedule. And now in this length of the schedule, you count the number of process that you've completed, right? Then after finding it, then the throughput is nothing but number of process per unit time which means take the number of let us say you have completed six six process in maybe 60 units of time then the throughput is uh, you know 1 by 10 0 0.1 process per second that is how you come you come to know about the throughput right now uh, the overall throughput of every scheduling algorithm will be same but here what happens is at any point of time if you stop the schedule and then you count the throughput it is going to give you the best one which means at this middle point at this point if you stop it and if you see the throughput this will give you the best thing because uh, many of the process will get completed as early as possible it is simple why do we get the maximum value of throughput at any point of time is uh, we are trying to finish as many jobs as early as possible by taking the shortest burst times if i follow this strategy obviously many process will get uh, finished as early as possible isn't it fine therefore it will have maximum throughput and minimum average waiting time and turnaround time you can take an example and after i finish all the scheduling algorithms you do one thing take an example and see it that for any example of uh, this uh, shortest job first is going to give you the minimum uh, you know, average uh, waiting time and average turnaround time these are the two characteristics which are required by any scheduling algorithm in general anything you take up if these are the two must i mean uh, so this is the best one possible this is the best scheduling algorithm possible but the problem with this is starvation to longer jobs okay fine we can cope up with this but the main problem is it is not implementable because burst times of process cannot be known ahead this is the problem you cannot know how much time does a process require so you cannot implement it practically so since we cannot implement sjf we are not going to leave it completely what we could do is since we are not able to know the burst times exactly, we will approximate it. So we are going to approximate it like this. So shortest job first with predicted burst times, which means we predict the burst times and we start off. So we don't know for sure that we are right, but then we can predict the burst times and we can start, start off. It is like approximate algorithm, not the actual algorithm. See, whenever it is not possible to implement an algorithm, then what we do is the closest approximation. Then the solution will be uh, you know not the optimal one it will be the closest to optimal one right so here what is that we are doing is we are trying to predict the um, burst times now there are two ways you can predict the burst time one is static static means you are not going to see anything else once you fix it it is going to be like that and other is dynamic dynamic means it will continuously keep on changing while you are uh, performing the schedule right and now static means uh, process size it is based on two things one is either you could base on process size or you could base on process type and dynamic means there are two types one is you can base on uh, simple averaging and other is exponential averaging or it is also called as easing now I'll, ch I'll tell you I'll talk about the static first so the first technique is process size so depending on the process size if you guess the burst time that is the static one what does it mean so if a process is you know depending on the process size we count the size of the process 
and then we see if this size matches with any any process which we finished earlier and then we take that earlier process and we examine it how much time it has taken and now we predict that maybe these two could take the same time it is actually wrong i mean not not exactly right sometimes it works but it is simple one right so how it works is it is if there is a old process which has already finished whose process size was 200 kb and if it has took if it took uh, 20 units of time then the new process if its size is 201 kb it will also take 20 uh, units that is what i guess because the sizes are actually similar but then you know it is difficult because even though the sizes of the process are similar their nature might be different depending on the nature they might be different right so it is really difficult in that way or it is it is simplest one to implement it but then it is not actually i cannot say anything like it is not always right it is not always wrong sometimes it might be right sometimes it might be wrong therefore you know next method is uh based on the type of the process we can guess the bus time right so you know it is it is up to you you can fix some time like this depending on the type of the process if it is operating system process or user process what is operating system process is whenever operating system wants to run some code that is also a process right for example schedulers are all process dispatcher is a process and process manager is a process right so resource manager all of these are processes whenever operating system wants to run a process then that will be given some time so generally they run faster therefore 3 to 5 and then whenever user has a process there are various types of process one is interactive interactive means you want to continuously interact with it like gaming right another one is foreground foreground means you know uh, that will be running in the foreground background means it will be running as a demo it will be running behind behind right now depending on that you can assign some times because every process is not going to take the same time depending on the type of the process you can come up, come with the burst times anyway once you predict the burst time then you can go with shortest job first so if your prediction is right if your prediction is exactly right then you are you will get the best possible result from the sjf but then the prediction is always not right isn't it so there will be some uh, many things involved right so these two methods are a uh, work this way but the best methods are dynamic methods we shall see the dynamic methods now now one of the dynamic methods to predict the burst time is uh, simple averaging it is in simple words it is like this if you are taking up a process now then its burst time will be predicted as the average of all the process completed till now which means if you are talking about the process p5 then i'll see 1 2 3 4 process and i'll find out their burst times because they have they are already done with their execution then i'll take the average of this and i'll i'll predict that the fifth process is going to take that average time right so how is it going to be implemented if i have n process p1 p2 so on pn then let ta be the actual burst time which means that t a small ta is the actual burst time then a uh, tau i denotes the predicted burst time then how can i predict the tau i tau i which means the next process uh, you know burst time is it will be taken as the average of all the processes which all the process which are, which got completed that is why it is 1 by n into this one got it it is a simple one right uh, dynamic we shall see it now the next dynamic method to predict the burst time is exponential average so exponential average is like this see this uh to predict the time of n plus 1th process we are going to take alpha into actual time of the previous process plus 1 minus alpha into the predicted time of previous process which means when you are when you are uh, when you are at process p5 then i am going to depend on two things one is what has happened to p4 actual time and then what we predicted for p4 right so we are going to take the average of these two i mean some uh, not average some kind of it so here alpha is called as smoothening factor so it need not be hmm, in some number I, i mean it need not be zero or one it can be anything so how does this formula behave is i'll just tell you see now if you want to find out the you know prediction for t n plus tau n plus 1 then i want to take these two right then uh, in order to find this one can be found out by running nth process but this one is the guess isn't it then what is tau n according to this formula tau n equal to alpha into tn minus 1 in place of n i am putting n minus 1 plus 1 minus alpha into 
tau n minus 1 right and let's call this equation 2 and let's call this equation 1 so now we can substitute 2 in 1 equation 2 in equation 1 then what do we get then tau n plus 1 equal to alpha into tn plus now this entire thing you can multiply it out right so 1 minus alpha into alpha into tn minus 1 plus 1 minus alpha square into I am just writing here tau n minus 1 isn't it so if you look at this therefore the next prediction actually is depending on the previous time as well as the job you know previous earlier to this and then the prediction for this job as well so if you could uh, keep on expanding it you will even find out that the current the next prediction depends on all the previous history history means what has happened to all the process till now as well as what is your initial guess which means like this if you keep on extending it can i just extend it alpha into tn plus 1 minus alpha into alpha into tn minus 1 plus if i substitute this one 1 minus alpha square into if i substitute this one in place of tau n minus 1 if i substitute it then what i get is 1 minus alpha square into alpha into tn minus 2 plus 1 minus alpha cube into tau n minus 2 isn't it therefore you can see that it can be extended this way so the uh, next next process prediction depends on all the previous processes plus see this all the previous process plus the initial guess this one will go on till uh, you know the initial guess which is uh, the guess for the first one which is tau 1 so it is going to go till that tau 1 and it is going to stop there right so this is how this exponential method works if you want to understand it better let's solve this question okay one more thing this alpha is called as smoothening factor smoothening factor means what is the weightage that you want to give it to the previous process and what is the weightage that you want to give it to the remaining history right so now depending on alpha your values will change if you believe that you know previous the last process is actually right then you alpha high if you give alpha very high then the next process uh, time will be equal to the uh, you know earlier process time which means if i put alpha equal to 1 that is the highest value possible then tau n plus 1 will be equal to tn so this means that the next process uh, burst time you are predicting as to be what happened to the last one if you put alpha equal to 0 then what happens is tau n, tau n plus 1 equal to tau n which means what it, whatever you predicted last time you are staying on that you are sticking to that which means you are thinking that your prediction is always right so if you put alpha equal to 1 here it is very dynamic which means depending on the previous process you are going to change and if you put alpha equal to so one second in, in case if you put alpha equal to uh, 0 here then you are always remaining static which means whatever your initial guess is tau 1 is you are just just staying there so depending on the alpha the dynamism of this uh, algorithm depends are, are you understanding it see if i put alpha equal to 1 then what happens is tau n will become tn because this factor will become 0 which means the next process burst time you are predicting that it will be equal to the uh, earlier process burst time only one process you are very very dynamic right and in case if you put alpha as 0 then you are thinking that your guess your initial guess is right and what is this one so if you see this and go back and see this it will it will trace out to be tau 1 which means whatever you guessed for the first process that is that is going to be applied for all the process which means static right so now let's see the problem you'll understand it better now alpha value will be always given in the exam alpha is called smoothening factor smoothening factor right now alpha will be given in the exam and the remaining factors will be given like this if alpha equal to 0 0.5 and tau 1 equal to 10 so tau 1 equal to 10 means the initial guess i am guessing is uh, 10 uh, 10 units then the next four processes actual burst time turned out to be t1 t2 t3 t4 4 8 6 7 which means this is what i guessed but the actual burst times of four process turned out to be this then what is the next one so how can you do this i guess substitute in that formula right so one is you have to find out the tau 2 so how can you find out the tau 2 
it is alpha into tau 1 plus 1 minus alpha into alpha into what has happened to the first one t1 plus 1 minus alpha into tau 1 so alpha is 0 0.5 therefore 0 0.5 into t1 is 4 plus 0 0.5 into tau 1 is 10 then the average of these two is uh, 14 means 7 right and now the next one tau 3 so tau 3 is going to be alpha into t2 plus 1 minus alpha into tau 2 and tau 2 is this one right then what is it 0 0.5 into t2 is given as 8 plus uh, 0 0.5 into 7 so therefore it is 7 plus 8 by 2 which is 7.5 and now tau, tau 4 tau 4 is alpha into t3 plus 1 minus alpha into tau 3 then what is alpha into t3 it is 0 0.5 into t3 is nothing but 6 plus 1 minus alpha means 0 0.5 into tau 3 is nothing but 7.5 right and now you take the average of these two it is actually 13.5 average of 13.5 is i think uh, 6 point uh, Hmm, 6.75 right okay I'll again check it and now finally tau 5 so anyway don't worry about the numbers you please do it tau 5 is nothing but alpha into t4 plus 1 minus alpha into hmm, plus 1 minus alpha into tau 4 then what is it what is t4 t4 is given as 7 which means 0 0.5 into 7 plus 0 0.5 into tau 4 is 6.75 right so finally the answer for this one is uh, six point eight seven five. this is the answer okay so that is how you could solve the questions anyway you know practically we don't use it much so practically the most practical algorithm is round robin we shall see it